Greetings, beloved. I want to come to you and share this word that I believe will transform your life, will transform your destiny. You know, we are living in a season where it is more important than ever before that the church learn how to operate in the supernatural, learn how to operate in miracles, signs, and wonders. In fact, I want to take you over here to the book of Mark, one of my favorite gospel accounts, the gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter, a very, very important text. And it gives us a prototype, it gives us a standard by which we can measure the miraculous in the church, okay? In Mark chapter 16, glory be to God, this is what it says. Verse 14, afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now this is interesting. Let me stop here because this is a very, very important revelation. Jesus rebukes his disciples for not believing the report of the other disciples who saw him after his resurrection. In other words, he told them that he would rise again, and yet they did not believe. They did not anticipate his coming. They did not anticipate the resurrection. This is so important to understand because there is a whole segment of Christianity that don't believe in the supernatural, that don't believe in the power of God. We read about it. We, we hear sermons that talk about the resurrection on Easter, and, and Resurrection Sunday, we hear stories about how God parted the Red Sea with the Israelites and they crossed over on dry ground. We hear all kinds of stories about the flood with Noah. We hear about the story with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And yet when it comes to believing that God is a supernatural God today, many people don't believe. And Jesus corrects them. He challenges them because of their un unbelief. And this is what he says. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I want you to know this because this is so important. Signs and wonders are not the goal. Signs and wonders are not the goal. We are not Christians so that we can do signs and wonders. We don't follow God so that he will do miracles in our lives. We don't follow God because of what he will give us. But listen to this. This is important to understand. Signs and wonders happen because you are a Christian. Signs and wonders happen because you follow God. And in this case, signs, wonders, and miracles take place because you proclaim the gospel. In other words, the, 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 the focus of our endeavor, the focus of our pursuit is the kingdom of God. The scripture says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing things, and these things will be added unto you. All these things. So as we pursue the king and his kingdom, signs and wonders follow. They accompany the, pro the proclamation of the gospel. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Come on, say amen, somebody. So signs and wonders are not the goal, but the gospel is the goal. In fact, Paul the Apostle wrote in Romans chapter 1, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The word power there is the Greek word dunamis. It means explosive power. We get the English word dynamite, explosive power power, dynamic power, demonstrative power, power resident in a thing by virtue of its nature. Strong's, in Strong's definition of the word dunamis, it includes the power to perform miracles, the power to perform miracles. And so we understand that the gospel is the power source. The gospel is is the power source. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. In other words, the gospel is the power source. It is the preaching, 
and the proclaiming of the gospel. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, but, but the Holy Spirit's the power. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to come to that in a minute. Without the gospel, the, holy, the power of the Holy Spirit is not efficacious. It's not effective. Without the Holy Spirit, the gospel is not efficacious. So if I, if I remove the word, I lose the power. I hear what I'm saying. If I remove the word, I lose the impact. If I, if I have the spirit, watch this, if I remove the spirit, I lose the impact. So we need spirit and word. We need the proclamation of the gospel and the demonstration of the power. This is so important to understand. Without the gospel, you do not have legitimate power. This is why so many people, they go to conferences, they go to meetings, and they go to all these things, and they're looking for power. They want to experience the power of God. But listen, if you don't have a basis in the gospel, your power that you are seeking is illegitimate power. It's illegal power. It's not from God. Because the Holy Spirit empowers the gospel. The Holy Spirit breathes on the word. The Holy Spirit enforces what thus says the Lord. And so the first thing you have to understand is that if we're going to live in miracles, we have to be immersed in the word of God. We have to be committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that these signs will follow. In other words, you're not called to follow the signs, but you are called to follow Jesus. You are called to pursue the kingdom. And as you pursue the kingdom, signs and wonders will follow you. Amen? Somebody say amen right there. As you pursue the kingdom, signs and wonders will follow you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And Jesus begins to talk about many aspects of the gospel, of this message of the kingdom. He says, go into all the world, in verse 15, and preach the gospel to every creature. I want to stop here. Very important to understand. If you're going to see miracles, you have to take action. The power accompanies the go. God will not empower you to sit. He will not empower you to lay. He only empowers you to go. So as you go, you experience the release of the power. Many people say to me, how... Dr. Keenan, how in the world do you see so many miracles in your ministry? Well, it's because I stepped out in faith. If Peter never stepped out of the boat, he would never see the power of God to keep him walking on the water. He had to get out of the boat first. Many people are trying to ask God to move miraculously while they sit in the boat. You got to get out of the boat. Secondly, he says, these signs shall follow them that believe. You must believe. You see, faith releases the supernatural. When you put your faith in the word of God, you activate the power of the word. That's so important to understand. Glory be to God. And then it says, in my name will you cast out demons. See, you have to understand, you have the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus is a weapon in perilous times to activate the supernatural and release the power of God for your life. These are keys that you must know as we navigate these difficult times and see miracles. When everybody else says there's a going down, you're going to say there's a lifting up. Beloved, I, I really believe this is your season. Let me pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I activate every person. I, I declare in the name of Jesus that that those watching me were created for signs and wonders. They were created for miracles. They were created for the supernatural. And I declare that this is our season to be activated and to move in the power of God like never before. In Jesus' name, amen.